partnership meetings, which we're uh, holding uh, in Croydon for the forthcoming new year. Um, we used to sit around the table just to say hello, but obviously welcome to the members of uh, the public. Um, and if we pop round, I'm Councillor Stuart Coyne, so I'm chair this year. I'm Lawrence, head of the environment. <coughs> uh, Councillor Stuart King, uh, the uh, second Croydon rep, cabinet member for environment and transport. And 
I would actually think that it would be quite informative for those people that do want to ask questions at the particular meeting following that we present it at, to do so on an informed basis. So yes, I think we will put that uh, in there. We've also as well asked for comment from the environmental agency as well. Um, so of course, uh, they will be invited as well uh, representatives from Mirador will be invited to attend the meeting. We have no um, powers to make them attend the meeting, but I'll certainly make sure that we invite them to attend when those reports are uh, available for the public to ask a few questions. Okay, I think anyone else on that? Is that fine? Okay, so moving on then to um, phase A and phase five and six rather. Phase A and B management report. Um, is that uh, Annie? Oh, it's Andrew, sorry, Andrew. <laughs> okay, so again, yeah, this is the contract management report for quarter one of 2019-2020. Uh, the report provides the performance summary for the three phase A contracts um, procured by SLWP, as well as the 2012 residual waste treatment contract, which we also refer to as the ERF contract. Uh, section 1.8 of the report provides a brief summary of contract one, which is operated by Variable Waste Management. This is a waste transfer section and haulage contract only, and there's no other treatment or disposal of waste carried out under this contract. And Viridor will deliver this until August 22. 1.9 of the report notes the fire that we uh, um, just alluded to that occurred at the Bennington Waste Transfer Facility on the 11th of July, and we've attached a briefing note from Viridor on this matter, of course, Appendix uh, B. Section two of the report summarizes the performance at our HRRC sites. 2.5 of the report uh, really summarized an issue that was raised on customer satisfaction surveys in regard to wait times. Uh, increased wait times were largely due to uh, seasonal reasons, uh, as round 12 includes two of the main bank holidays, uh, and at Pearly Oaks there were uh, some increased delays for one week due to the essential site repairs at, the, um, at the, uh, that particular site. Garth Road wait times have uh, been slightly higher for that period, so we're monitoring those as well. Managing site performance at the HRC sites is, is, um, is continues to be challenging. The garden waste tons uh, have dropped and the number of mattresses, for example, have also increased. The contract we're undertaking a uh, bag uh, black bag searches and some waste analysis uh, in order to better understand what's in residual waste. And we're reviewing the analysis results uh, at the contract meetings on a monthly basis. Um, we've seen about a 10% reduction in total tons received through the HRC sites. Commercial waste clamped down operation by the area has resulted in a further drop in DIY waste, and rubble is also down a further 18% on the same period last year. Contract three of the report, in section three of the report, is our recycling and composting contract. Uh, that uh, summary of the terms can be found in Appendix A, Part 4, and um, there's no issues to report on that contract. And finally, section four of the report covers the 2012 uh, residual waste treatment contract. 4.6 of the report talks about the takeover activities, uh, and we can update that on the 21st of August. The independent certifier did issue the takeover certificate for the facility. Uh, and then finally, during quarter one, we delivered just over 50,000 tons to Viridor South London underneath that phase, uh, phase B ERM contract. Uh, that is um, a 10% reduction in residual waste when compared to the same period last year. So roughly that will save us um, combined saving, saving of in excess of £500,000 for the partnership. Uh, recommendation is to the uh, content of the report. Okay, thank you very much. And um, what I intend to do, um, can we just take questions at this point um, just on the other parts of the report and then we'll take a further set of questions regarding uh, the incident briefing around the fire. Um, so any questions on the other points in the report? Um, I just, just another question, just wanted to highlight the, um, the, the good news that we're deterring commercial waste. Um, it, it looks like the pilot scheme we're doing in Bennington is, is working. I know there was a few skeptics when we first introduced it, um, especially around the increased light to pay elsewhere, but it doesn't seem to have happened and we're saving money, so I just wanted to put that on record. Thank you, sir. Have we got any other questions about the substantial part of the report? Okay. Um, could I have questions from, uh, is there, are there any questions from members of the committee regarding the uh, the incident report that's uh, been completed by Viridor, and then we'll complete that item uh, with a, a question from uh, Councillor Nati. Um, yes, just a quick question to, to officers, I guess, on the partnership.
membership if we've had much contact from residents um, since the fire and what type of questions have been they've they been asking if, if any if, if, uh, and, and I don't know if um, officers in the room also have been contacted much by, by residents I, I haven't had an email so I'm just wondering what the questions are that the residents are raising I believe we've seen a number of questions coming through to the partnership and we've got that many that are just experiencing new work not yet. Okay, just on the um, on the two point five and the uh, the wasting terms, particularly in Merton, um, I mean, do we have any sense of why that is and whether people are then being deterred from going back? Um, because we have a particular issue in Merton with fire chickens. I think everywhere does. Um, so obviously we want to do everything we could to encourage people to dispose of their waste.
before it was brought up to, under control. Now, what what I would like to put to members of the um, South London Waste Partnership is that the the thing is that obviously um, incinerators are not particularly um, popular with uh, with people, um, and uh, and, uh, and I think that the South London Waste Partnership over previous years has recognised that um, it is a bit of a public relations nightmare. And you know that's why, of course, we're you know most people you have to refer to it as a, an ERF, where the standard term for uh, <coughs> for this type of unit is it's a waste uh, it's a waste disposal unit with a limited energy recovery facility. But anyway, uh, you know that's that's the semantics. But what what is a deep concern and, um, uh, on this particular issue was that the. Uh, a few hours after the fire started, um, Viridor issued a press release which was basically um, repeated by Sutton Council describing the fire with 200 foot high smoke pool um, as, as a small fire and unconnected with the incinerator because obviously the problem for Sutton Council is that Obviously, it's a political architecture, and the other problem is, is that they happen to be in a business relationship with Viridor as they uh, buy hot water off them for their heat network. So the trouble is that they they, they, they see their public relations um, uh, effort as being unified with that of Viridor. So what I would like to try and see is not only can we try and answer as many questions as possible because I, about the causes of the fire and, and strategy for not being, it not being repeated, because I don't know if you know, but um, sewage who's uh, record with fires is not uh, not far behind that. Viridor's in their clubs. I think Viridor had 14 fires <laughs> since 2015. Yeah, I I'll come to the chase. The, what, 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 we, what we really need to do is that the, if there is an incident, the first thing we need to do is when we get this report, we need to be able to say to the report, this should not be repeated again. You know, I, I, you know, I look at, uh, I study, I think this happens to be a great interest in incinerators and, and, and waste treatment plants throughout Germany. And, they have nothing like this, you know, the way they manage it, their fire detection. So we, we really need to put Viridor on the spot. And also, when an incident, we want to first of all prevent a uh, repeat of this, but also we need to um, provide real, uh, when, if an incident, for, for, for whatever reason, does break out again, we need, we don't, mustn't downplay it, we mustn't trivialise it for the sake of public relations for for one council that feels that it's, it's, it's in trouble. <coughs> we, we must try, and the South London Waste Partnership should have a, a protocol by, by which it can respond accurately. It should have a, if you like, an emergency, because we operate, um, the South London Waste Partnership operates um, sites yeah. around. Okay. All I'm saying is, can we look again how, in, in the unfortunate event of a fire, how we can best, as a South London Waste Partnership, respond to residents and give them an accurate position, uh, so that, and perhaps an emergency number, so that they can uh, find out exactly what's going on and get properly informed. Yeah. That's, that's my central, central point. And, I, okay. and, and thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank thank you. you. I think an incident like this is something for us all to learn from anyway, and I think uh, obviously I agree with the points you made around making sure that these type of incidents don't happen again, but if they do, um, um, then there's also going to be an opportunity to make sure that we get the lines of communication correct, and that we make sure that the public are informed correctly as quickly, quickly as we can. Was there any officer that would like to comment in general on the paper? Um, And just to say that Annie and I spoke immediately uh, about uh, the fire. I also spoke with my own director, and we said that it was important that we got as quickly as we could the answers. And uh, what we made sure.
law is that the South London Waste Partnership's communication didn't jump to any conclusions um, because, you know, quite rightly, we're not experts on what actually happened with the incident. We need to wait until the fire service get back to us. But, um, anyway. That's the first thing I'd like to say is that the fire service is our agency version themselves. All of those investigations need to be made very close to the and clients and the ones clients before having those. That information in front of us. Um, just, to, just to clarify, this file was on a part of the Edmonton site that relates to our, an earlier contract we have with Viridor that relates to management of waste in a waste transfer station that is not part of the new facility, um, just so that it's, it's clear. Um, and I think absolutely you know, we will review again our processes for communications. We do that regularly in any event. I would want to be very sure that people were clear in terms of you know, there are existing hotlines for in terms of. Obviously, getting in touch with local services and also the environment agencies and hotlines and so on. But absolutely, we want people to feel reassured that the right processes are in place to manage any incidents and the day to day management of the sites. And, 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 I, and I, would, I would just add that I think rather than each of the individual councils making comment, I think that in future we probably need to go straight to the South London Waste Partnership officers to get the full story and then if there is any communication that needs to be got out to the public, it's done through our communications rather than individual councils, councils sending different messages. I think that's something we can definitely learn from this process. Okay, is the report noted? Okay, thank you very much and thank you for the public for asking questions. Okay, um, agenda item seven. Um, Michael, about my next week. Uh, yes, this paper provides an update on the partnership's budget position at month four, July um, 2019, the financial year, and the projected outturn for the 2019 20 financial year. Uh, the predicted outturn for the year at month four is that the forecast spend will be as per budget, however, there are two variances to note. The advisors are forecasting an overspend of £35,000 to be engaged with advisors to assess the options available for the renegotiation or re fulfilment of the HRRC contract. Um, there's also an underspend of £35,000 um, for vacant um, post of uh, the waste strategy officer, which isn't the business being filled until at least December 2019, with the two left each other off. That sounds good. Okay, excellent. Um, any questions <coughs> for Michael? Okay, can the uh, report be noted? Okay, thank you very much, Michael. Um, okay, then item agenda item nine, the South London Waste Management Group, um, Annie. Um, yeah. That's our, our risk. I don't know, I'll pick up on the right one, the last bit, so like, someone's missed it in the photocopy, or I have. Right, pick up on item, <laughs> item agenda eight, not missed in, not missed in the uh, in the photocopy, and it's Michael again, our finance lead. Uh, again, Michael, if you could. Uh, um, the partnership is required to produce draft budget for consideration by this committee by the 31st of October each year. And this is the um, first draft of paper. In accordance with the interdisciplinary agreement, the agreed draft budget is then subject to consideration by the individual boroughs before a finalised budget is taken to the Joint Waste Committee for approval. The IIA, IAA sets out that the final budget must be approved by the 31st of December each year. The table in parallel 2.1 shows the proposed budget for 2021 and the 2019-20 budget for comparisons. Um, the proposed budget for 2021 allows for increments and pay price increases of 2%. Um, the only paragraphs I'm to your attention to is um, 2.6 and 2.7. 2.6, in 1920, uh, there was a budget in the communications line for the Triangle Prison Service uh, Survey. This has been removed for 2021. Um, would be brought back for approval for the 2023 budget process. And paragraph 2.7, there's a budget of £50,000 recommended for further work to either re procure or renegotiate the HRRC contract that is currently running until 30th September 2022. The recommendation is for the committee to agree the pro proposed draft budget for the core activities of the partnership, as set out in paragraph 2.1, and request individual boroughs to consider and agree the resources required to consult, to have consultation with borough finance directors and to note that the final budget will be brought back to this committee for sign up in December. Okay, thank you. Any questions, Michael? Okay, can we agree the proposed draft budget? 
through day three, did you? Thank you. And also we do know that uh, the final budget will be brought uh, for the December sign off. Can we know that? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so we move on to agenda item nine then. So, Amy. Um, Yeah, the risk of all.
right integrity is our um, communications and engagement at South London Waste Partnership. Um, we'll be watching a, a, a video of our point from that John will be showing us at the back about the journey of our recycling from the doorstep to uh, what it becomes, which is uh, quite looking forward to seeing. Uh, obviously, it's going to go out publicly, uh, but also uh, some of our cabinet meetings we're going to have a little roadshow for them, John. And then we've got um, some comments uh, around from Annie regarding some work we've been doing with the Environmental Agency because um, some of us have expressed concern about um, some of the emissions rates uh, that are probably being, being exceeded. So we've got in touch with the Environmental Agency to see what their opinion is on that and the others will be going through a statement that we received on, on that. So uh, John first, then Annie. John, then we'll watch the video, and then we'll move on to any statement about it. Uh, you know. Thank you, Chair. If it's okay, I think we can pick up the um, any bit in section eight of my report, actually. Okay. I can get the permissions in there, so yeah, quite thank you, sir. So yeah, so this uh, report uh, focuses on activity that's taken place between July and September uh, in relation to the phase A and B contracts. And uh, yeah, I wanted to kick off tonight with a slightly um, slightly unusual thing and show you all the short film. This is the uh, destination recycling film that's been produced. The idea is to try and uh, provide residents with more information about where particular recycling, but also their non-recycled waste, um, ends up after it's taken from the doorstep to try and build trust and, and, and give people the confidence that we're, we're handling their materials in the best way possible. Um, so the film has, it's actually been quietly sitting on the SLWP website for a few weeks now. Uh, but I'll come on to in, in the next um, section of the update how we're going to promote these from next week, which of course is Recycle Week. Um, and I say film, there's actually five versions of the film. What we're going to watch tonight is the five minute version. Uh, there's quite a lot of information in here, and we rattled it at quite a pace, so you'll need to, you'll need to concentrate. But uh, we've also cut it down into four shorter one minute films that focus on each individual waste stream. So if you're particularly interested in food waste or particularly interested in paper card, you can just go and watch that shorter one minute version as well. So um, hopefully there's a version for everyone. So if I just um, pop up here and put the film on. Have you ever wondered what happens to the stuff you recycle? Where it's taken and what it's turned into? You have? Great, let's go and find out. So, your local council works together with three other London boroughs, with the help of specialist waste management companies, more on them later. They collect and recycle all your food waste, plastics, paper, glass, cans and cartons. They even do clever stuff with your rubbish. They're called the South London Waste Partnership. Together, they send all this material on an amazing recycling and reprocessing journey. And it all starts with you. First up, food waste. By putting food waste in your kitchen caddy rather than the bin, you are the first part of an important chain. The contents of the caddy go into your outdoor food bin, which is collected every week, and taken to sites in either Kingston or Sutton before it's all transported to an anaerobic digestion facility in Surrey. This place treats 50,000 tonnes of food waste and other organic matter every year. Everything from fruits and veg peelings to eggshells, meat and fish bones, tea bags and the odd apple core too. But what happens to it? We feed it to a cow, obviously. Not a real cow though, we call this the concrete cow. It's a highly sophisticated process that mimics a cow's digestive system, transforming all that food waste into organic biofertilizer. Farmers use this to help grow their crops, making some of the food that will end up back on your plate. And here's the really clever bit. Gases given off from the digestion process are captured and used to generate electricity, which is fed into the national grid, powering thousands of homes. So none of the waste is wasted. Mmm, nice jumper. The cardboard delivery box you put in your wheelie bin, along with newspapers, card, envelopes and paper, stays nice and dry. It's collected every two weeks and stored at one of four locations before heading off to UK paper mills like this one in North Wales. Here it's washed to remove inks, staples and glue and then mixed with water to create a slurry. By adding different materials to this slurry, a variety of paper-based products can be created. So, all your used paper and cardboard is recycled into, yes, you've guessed it, new newspapers, cardboard boxes and other paper products too. 
Nice shoes. They'll go well with the jumper. Right, we want all your plastic bottles, tubs and trays, glass bottles and jars, cans, tins and cartons. And we want them in your mixed recycling wheelie bin or box. Unlike paper and card, this lot don't mind getting cosy or wet. They're collected every two weeks and taken to the same places as your paper and card, where they're bulked up, ready for the next stage of the journey. Which is a trip to a materials recovery facility, like the one operated by Veolia in Raynham one of several recycling sorting facilities we use in the south of England. Here, the plastics, glass, cans and cartons are sorted by machine and by hand. Each of the separated materials are baled, then sold onto specialist reprocessors. Glass and metals are pretty easy materials to deal with. They can be melted down and turned into new products. Plastics are trickier. There are over 50 different types, some better quality than others. Lower quality plastics are sent to reprocessors in the UK for recycling whenever possible. But sometimes we have to send them to recycling facilities in other parts of Europe. Wherever they end up, our partner Veolia works hard to make sure all the plastic is recycled and handled in the most environmentally friendly way possible. Higher quality plastics like milk bottles are easier to deal with. Most of these are processed much closer to home at Veolia's own specialist facility in Dagenham. The plastic bottles are shredded, washed, then melted down into pellets. These pellets are used to make anything from clothing, chairs and toys to more plastic bottles. Your recycling efforts are heroic. But sadly, not all of the stuff we put in our bins can be recycled. However, it can still be useful. Your general rubbish is collected every two weeks and taken to the Beddington Energy Recovery Facility in Sutton. Here, it's burnt at high temperatures in strictly controlled conditions that makes sure it's efficient and safe. The heat produces steam, which in turn drives a turbine and generates electricity. And lots of it. The facility produces enough energy to power itself, plus around 55,000 homes. Even the leftover ash gets reprocessed and reused in road building and construction. Clever stuff, eh? And much better than burying it in landfill, which is what used to happen. But it's important to remember that once this material is burnt, it's gone forever. So, Anything that can be recycled, should be recycled. Oh, and don't forget, some of the bins and boxes you use to store your recycling and rubbish may be different to the ones shown in this film. If you're not sure what goes where, check your local council's website. So you see, we do some pretty amazing stuff with your recycling and rubbish. But without you, none of this could happen. Thank you for helping us recycle more and waste less. Before, um, before Jordan continues, can I give you a massive thanks for that? I think uh, the, the committee all, all felt um, a few months ago um, that it was important that we spelled out the message where recycling went, and I think that really hits the note, so well done. Um, do you continue with the uh, talk, and then obviously bring it out a bit in about the action and what's actually questions. Thank you, Councillor, I appreciate that. Yes, I hope you found that informative, um, and uh, it's, uh, it's certainly, when I've shown it to people that aren't as involved in the sector as we are, there's a lot more people who realise that, and I think people are surprised how much of the stuff is treated very close to home, so hopefully that will be informative to our residents as well. Um, so moving on to section two of, of my report, uh, Recycle Week starts next Monday, uh, 23rd of September. We've got lots of activity uh, taking place across the four boroughs uh, this year. Uh, the first one of those is going to be a social media advertising campaign that will start next week, but will actually run for about six to eight weeks, and that will be focused on promoting the new Destination Recycle videos uh, and getting awareness out there that they're up there. Uh, we're going to test a few different options in terms of the longer version, the shorter versions, and, and see what works best. Uh, but we're, we're hoping for some good results from that. Um, the paragraph 2.3 I'm at here now, uh, the boroughs, I'm pleased to say, were successful in a joint bid to Resource London for £10,000 of funding um, for Recycle Week, which is enabling us to run uh, an outdoor advertising campaign across the tram network. Um, so you'll see from Monday next week um, artwork going across the tram, uh, at the tram stations um, to highlight awareness of Recycle Week and also on 98 outdoor advertising boards across Kingston and Croydon. And the earlier are also undertaking a series of school visits. Um, they actually started uh, last week and they're running through next week as well with the Recycling Week thing. So lots going on for Recycle Week. On to 
to section three, um, also food waste engagement events. So good, good quarter for funding. We, we submitted another joint bid
facilitated that increase. So I think we should be saying thank you to residents for helping us increase the recycling rates, albeit it might have been a result of that service change. That's a very good point. When I attend residents' associations meetings, we've been putting out the important rise in recycling. I always make sure that I make a point of saying thank you for your patience and understanding with the introduction of the new system, but a big thank you to you all for participating and helping increase recycling. Any other questions? Yes, thank you. Just a quick comment. I just want to echo the comments that have been made on the video. It's a fantastic video, and it will be interesting to see at the next meeting how well it did with the residents. And also congratulations on the funds you've secured. We should maybe get it to Sutton to do a bit of a few bids for us because you seem to be quite good at it. And I'm pleased also that we're focusing on the food waste issue because I know that in Sutton one of the big discussions we're having now is not necessarily we want to continue to improve our recycling rates, but we also want to start speaking to residents about reducing their waste and how much food waste they produce. So I'm happy that we're looking at that, and it will be interesting to see what comes out of it. Yeah, sorry, it was to respect actually what both of the colleagues have said about how good the video is, but also to come back to this point about it's very good for people to be very grateful for people having started to use and increasingly use the recycling. But we also urge people to not buy stuff, consume stuff that they don't need, to reuse plastic containers and things like that, which helps them to reduce the amount of recycling that we get. So it's kind of counterintuitive that we're doing better if they actually produce less recycling because of the recycling that isn't essential to their lives. Well, I'm sorry. I think there is a workshop that we can have in Maxis. Prior to the next meeting where we can talk about how the partnership can encourage using reusables or refilling, for instance, washing liquid is a good one, that you don't have to go and buy another plastic bottle, but you can take your bottle now to some outlets and refill it. It's that sort of work we should all try and lead the way on the South London Waste Partnership. So if we can have a workshop on that, that would be really good. That's a really good point. Yes. Thanks for your efforts on the video. I think you mentioned something around different lengths of video because I know the video of that kind of length is really informative if you've gone to look for that information and you know you want to find that information or someone was doing a session in a school or whatever. But if you're sort of sharing videos to take them to get people to pick them up who maybe aren't looking for that information, often we look at something around 30 seconds to a minute, otherwise people move on, they don't look at it. Is there a way we get some of the key messages across without, you know, not in set off but in addition to the sort of full longer version that we've got? Yeah, absolutely. So I showed you that full length version for lunch just because it's so good running up and down and doing it four times. But yes, so in addition to that five minute version, you've got four much shorter versions, just over a minute each, which focus on each of those waste streams. And what we're going to look at doing, they're all on the SLWP website. So if you go to slwp.org.uk forward slash destination hyphen recycling, you'll find all the videos there. There's also some updated content to support the videos as well. So that's worth having a look at. What we're going to do with the social media campaign that I mentioned that's launching next week, we're going to test out some different approaches. So we've got some 10 second trailers that kind of lead people into the longer film. So one option we're looking at is using social media to position those 10 second trailers in people's news feeds and then getting them to link out to the website so they can then watch the full version of the film. But we're also going to deliver the one minute versions of the film direct into news feeds as well. It's a little bit longer than you would typically do on social media, but we think it might work given the content and as long as we get the messaging right and we target those adverts well. So it will be really interesting to see which one works best. And after a few days of doing it, we'll have a look and then we'll sort of push our efforts on what's working best. So yeah, we've got lots of different versions available to the capacity. Okay, any other questions? Okay, can we all agree the report? Agree with you, thank you very much. And that concludes the meeting. Thank you everybody for attending and of course our members of public for taking the interest. Thank you.